Okay, says I'm live. So we'll wait for people to come in. And you can watch me and Eileen argue for a little while. Let me get me set up on this other computer. Move this away, so. Coffee back, okay. Ready. Hi, Kenny. Hi, Melda. Hi, Galena. By the eraser. That was very cool, Galena. I swear it, it's hard not to. Galena sent me a link for a, a steel eraser. Oh, my God. Looks like a ruler. Hi, Lena. Hi, Joy. Hi, CB. Hi, Amy. Hi, Kimberly. Hi, Gail. Julie. Hi, Mindy. Hi, Dabbler. Jennifer. I think I'm catching up with everybody. Hi, Joan. Hi, Eileen. You can use it as a bookmark, too. Win-win. Well, there you go. How can I say no to that? But it was very cool. Makes me want one really bad. But, oh, my God. I have erasers. I have rulers. I have everything. It's just like, where do you stop? That's kind of where I'm at is there's so much cool stuff out there. How can you... Yeah, at some point you just have to say, enough. Enough already. So, hi, Kathy. So, we'll just give people a little bit of time to come in. A lot of you I know are coming over from Dee Dee's. Um, she just finished showing her happy mail. Lucky girl. Hi, Kayberg. You've got 10 minutes. Well, we'll probably spend that just sitting here doing nothing because I thought today Eileen didn't give me any suggestions for what I'm doing today you had to use a damn ruler in your class yesterday tell Antonio or whatever his name is I owe him I'll buy him two thongs you just stash pens and stuff two large size priority mailboxes I that's nothing Thanks, Kathy. Um, so anyway, what was I saying? Yeah, Eileen didn't tell me what I was doing today. So first thing that came to mind was watercolor. I have all these darn books, and I have done almost no projects out of them. So yeah, I just feel like I ought to use it. <gasps> Artie Dar. Hi, Artie Dar. Oh, my gosh. I haven't seen you in forever. It's so good to see you. I hope life is doing well for you. Hi, Carla. Um, I do see you occasionally on Facebook. So, oh, it's so good to see you. Who is the author of your do-it-yourself watercolor flowers book? I will pull that up. DIY watercolor flower book. Because I'm so organized, I know right where to go to get it. <clears throat> For those of you who are new, Artie Dar, um, Mariano, who just walked into chat, that I was, I'm so happy to see her. Um, Artie Dar used to stream when we were all on Ustream incredibly talented woman i'm not kidding i'm sure a lot of her videos are still up on um youtube but one thing about Artie dar that i miss the most dar and i don't mind saying this is she streamed on i think it was friday nights um very creative so creative she would give us homework every week and i tell you that homework motivated me so much I probably did more work, more creative, whatever, um, because of Artie Dar than anybody else I've ever watched. So, hi, Julie. Anybody I've missed? Hi, AJ, Belinda, um, and you're welcome, Dar. 
and and if you miss us, you have no idea how much we miss you. But I know you're off having a happy life with hubs, so good on you. Hi, Jade. Hi, Lane. Norma. You rocked it. You did rock it, Dar. Go buy more pens, Galena. There is no such thing in the world as too much pens. Okay. Um, Amy, my neighbor, who I'll tell you this morning, I hear a truck pull into my driveway. So I go look out and her husband's truck is kind of loud. So I already kind of knew it was her. And she went and got me an uber large iced coffee. So the one thing I would recommend to all of you guys is you need a neighbor like Amy. I love her. Hi, Annie Tanner. You have both those books? Of course we do. We all have the same stuff because as soon as somebody shows it, Amy does rock. Um, we all get them. That shouldn't be hard to do, Dar. Do you do the cooking? <laughs> you can train any man to do anything if you are the boss in the kitchen. I've learned that. And I'll just give you that piece of advice for free. It's, it is all Eileen's fault. Yeah, Amy is the best neighbor ever. She's just the best person. I mean, whether she brought me coffee or not, her and her husband both, honestly, I don't mind saying out loud, um, best hearts in the world. So anyway, she just asked about this DIY watercolor flowers. Um, it is for beginners. It's awesome. We were playing with it. I think the other day Amy came down. She got some um, gouache. I think I'd showed it you, to you guys. It's inexpensive gouache that my niece had. Well, I say inexpensive, but um, that my niece had sent me this Hemi set. Uh which I haven't used a whole lot of, but um, I do like the whites. I've used a lot of the whites and they stay kind of gooey. So yeah, this one got air in it because this one's kind of dried, but I think they re-moisten, so no worries there. But Amy got this only in pink and came down and we were playing. And so I was showing her some of the books that she needs to borrow from me to take home, right? Hi, Whippy. Dar's in the room, Whippy. Artie Dar. Cook and desert him. There you go. See, if you run the kitchen, Dar, you can have all the time you want. Anyway, the um, author of this is Marie Boudon, B-O-U-D-O-N. Um I did a project out of this. In fact, that reminds me of um, a conversation we were having at Dee Dee's about um, when she was showing the Arteza books, I think it was. And in chat, we got having um, conversations about good product, you know, expensive products versus um, inexpensive. And my feeling about um, products or supplies is use the supplies that your budget can afford. Um, hi, G Brody. Um, and I mentioned in there that you can make beautiful art with Crayola. And I don't know, some of you will remember when I did this project and it's out of a different book. I don't remember which one, um, but I did this painting and I did both of them on the same day. This was with M. Graham or the Mission watercolors. This is with Crayola on really cheap paper. And this is the Dina Wakely 100% cotton um, book. And I highly recommend it just because it's so cool. Hi, Gary's. Um, but I would say don't say that your um, budget dictates whether or not you can make beautiful art because this is literally Crayola um, watercolors right off the shelf 
and you can make awesome art just with it. I think a lot of it is just, um, well, for me, I'll speak for me, nobody else. Like I just got into watercolor, so I want to try it all. I want to try Crayola. I want to try M. Graham's. And, of course, my niece um, was kind enough to give me a bunch of them. But really, let your budget dictate your supplies. You can make some amazing things with stuff from the thrift store. So I, I'm just a huge believer in let your budget dictate what you use. Don't go into debt because you can make beautiful art regardless. But if you're like me, you want it all. Anyway, um, this book is truly, I would say, a beginner book. If you just want to get comfortable with your paints and stuff like that, I've done quite a bit out of it. You learn wet on wet. and um, She does do primarily flowers. And flowers, I think, are a good um, thing to work on because unless you're doing a study of a flower, almost anything can be turned into a flower and turn beautiful. Um, I mean, a circle. In fact, I did this the day Amy was here. So, Amy, don't you buy this book. You come down to my house and you get it. And you take it home and you play with it, okay? Your silver brushes arrived today. Um, now, one thing I will say about watercolor and watercolor brushes, the ones that are designed for watercolor, I think, are preferable to using others just because in watercolor, it's important how much water your brush can hold and disperse. So that's the one thing where I'd say you might want to invest in um, brushes specific to the product. And Kathy Arbor agrees with me, so that means I'm right because Kathy knows everything, <laughs> I'm pretty sure. If you don't follow Kathy Arbor, um, click on the three dots by her name and start following her. Um, you will learn a lot. And not to mention, she's just a really, really good artist. Like her work is fabulous. We're so lucky, you guys. We get to hang out with so many talented people. Thank you, Lucky Stars. But this is a good book. Amy, come down and get it. Really, in fact, there is that project that I did right there. And buy the best paper, too, like arches. Um, Whippy, I kind of agree with you on that. But just like I showed you on the 100% cotton versus the B paper, um, This has its limitations. This is B paper. It is inexpensive. It has its limitations. And I talk like I'm a freaking expert, which I'm not. Um, but I think when you're starting just to get used to the product, the brushes, how the water works, um, I wouldn't use arches because then you are afraid of ruining expensive paper. Um, I think if you're going to do a project, yes, get out your arches. But hi, Vaughn. Um, just for sitting down and playing and getting used to the feel, um, seeing what it can do. Yeah, I would say mm, save your arches for later. But ultimately, you're going to want to try the 100% cotton fiber um, paper, too. I mean, but you don't have to buy a whole pad of it. Buy it in sheets. Or get a fellow artist to um, give you one. I gave Amy some the other day so she could play. I hope to God she has. She probably hasn't, but I hope to God she has. But see, these are really simple. Anybody could do these if you're even interested in doing watercolor. My favorite kind of arts, and I'm sure I've told you guys, the, my favorite thing to do, and until I ran into you goofballs, and it's still my favorite, my favorite art is... Um, 
graphite. I like drawing with graphite. Um, so this, I've showed this before, but these are just little tiny drawings. And if you want some really fun drawing inspiration, Kathy Arbor did this to me. And I'm not even going to bitch at her because it was one of the best enabling that she's ever done is this sketch encyclopedia. Um, <clears throat> I've shown it before, but I brought it out today just to show it again because it shows you how absolutely simple, if you work at it, you can make anything um, doable. You will have to learn to adapt to what you have with how it works. Exactly. But we're all in the same boat there. Watercolors are so boring. Go take a nap. Um, but honestly, of all the books, I, I just love this book. And I've used it a lot. I mean, just sitting. I like to draw in the evenings with graphite. Um, I've used this book so much. If you look at the beast, my beast is an absolute mess right now. But let me see. Just drawing like a little mouse face, a bunny. Um, I'd have to go back. But look at the little ape. Those are all just simple little drawings that literally you guys take 10 or 15 minutes. So I could flip back through because when I'm drawing like that, I just go back and find a blank page that I haven't written much in that day and draw. So if you're interested in drawing, and many of you are, you say all the time, oh, I want to learn to draw. I want to learn to draw. Um, I'm going to say, like, this book is the best. You want to see the beast? You use this book for some of the nativity mural. Really, it's got 900 different items. It's got people. It's got animals. It's got buildings. It's literally got everything in it. And I think if you can um, feel comfortable just drawing a person, whatever, you're going to try and do it more. So I think that's the beauty of a book like this, is it builds your confidence until pretty soon you realize, crap, there's nothing I can't draw. Thank you, Dar. So, yeah, I just brought this out to show it again because of all the books that I've bought recently, and I've bought a few, um, I have to say, this is one of my absolute favorites. It really is. So if you want to get better at drawing, that's a good thing. And I think if you're going to watercolor, you have to have some measure of drawing ability, sketching ability, um, because you have to come up with an initial drawing, correct? Let me move that. What else was I going to show? I didn't mean to. I wasn't going to get that out. I thought I would probably work out of this book today. I've had it forever. I bought it last year at the Hobby Lobby um, clearance sale. And um, Kathy Arbor did one of the paintings out of this. I did go ahead and hit the um, buy button for granulation medium this morning so I can't do the one project that I wanted to do because I don't have the granulation medium but I thought I had marked a couple places in here I want to do this one um, and I thought well I could use either gauze or um, salt for the background because she does this one in purple let me see and in blue the this blue one I'm, I think I'm going to do this one today because the drawing itself is simple the only thing is I'm going to use salt rather than the granulation to give an interesting background. You just ordered the sketch. And see. Oh, good. Good, Galena. I think you're going to love it. Hi, Dee Dee, who is the author of the sketch encyclopedia. You should be able to find it or one of the mods will find it. Um, there's not an author. Well, in fact, I was reading last night. Several people have um, contributed to the content of this book. So just look up the sketch encyclopedia. It's by 3D Total Publishing. 
Um, it's a nice fat book. I mean, it feels like an encyclopedia. And at, even just picking it up and walking with it, you feel smarter because it's almost like a textbook. And even if you never open it, by osmosis, you're just smarter. I'm pretty sure that's the way it works, right? That's how I feel when I buy drawing books, is if I bought it, I'm automatically better for having done that. So I'd gone through um, several of my books, and there's so many projects in these that I want to do. So, okay, thank you. I love being smarter. <laughs> You're automatically smarter if you buy the book. That's my, the way I look at it. So there's tons and tons of projects in here um, that I want to do. So you guys can either decide for me or I'm just going to probably do this one with some salt to jack with the background. But look at these books. Who, do, who wouldn't want to do that? Huh? And I never thought, I. in fact, Elaine will tell you, I never thought I'd be interested um, in watercoloring until I tried it. And then I was just like, interesting premise, I know. Thank you, Galena. I love that. Good books do make me feel smarter. Glad I'm not the only one. <laughs> do whatever you feel like doing. Well, I, I love watercolor. If it works out for me, great. If it doesn't, no big deal either. But I'm excited now to get the granulation medium now that I've decided to order it too. And this is another book that I just love. And I thought if I didn't do this one, I would do this one, the hummingbird on the, is something called flamingo, pink flamingo, Hellasonia. And I think I'm just getting ready for spring, you guys. No damn flowers. <laughs> How about a hummingbird? But the birds and the flowers are really making me feel excited for spring. Flamingos. It's not... Um, it's not a real flamingo. It's a flower that's called flamingo. And I did not do that on purpose for Eileen. I just, I was flipping through the books, looking at things that looked fun. And then this is the Law's Guide to Nature Drawing and Journaling. And I was thinking this spring, I'm going to start a nature journal like this. And if I see a bird, I'm going to try and find the bird. If I see a leaf, I'm going to try and do the leaf. I'm just going to try and do that. Flowers on a flamingo, perfect. This book, this Law's Guide, I do too. This is another one that just picking it up and looking at it automatically makes you more capable of the thing you want to do, I'm pretty sure. But there's just something so appealing about this that I thought, you know what? This spring, I'm going to do that. And I'm going to try and do something every day, either a sketch of a bird or a sketch of a flower, or a leaf, or something, do something in the watercolor unleashed. Okay, that's what she's saying. This is watercolor unleashed. I'm thinking I might do this one. And Eileen, what do you think about me doing it in this in stinky journal? Eileen made me buy this. It's not that I didn't want to. Um, you ready for spring? You got eight inches yesterday. Yeah. I think we're all kind of ready for spring. Um, so I just started this book playing, um, and I like to paint the squares like this that overlap, and then the colors mix, and you get what you get. I like it. This is not great watercolor paper. Um, that is more artistic than just a damn flower. She made you buy that one, too. Yeah. Hashtag it's all Eileen's fault. It is. We had snow last week and we don't get snow often. But this, I'm wondering if I should change my mind about working in this little, I love this journal. Maybe this should be my nature journal. 
I think it will be. All right, I'll get out some watercolor paper. You're ready for winter? Oh, you must be in um, Oz or the Southern Hemisphere, Carla. The journal is really cool. I, I will say that this journal is really cool. And the stink did go away, you guys. Like, it had to be just moisture in the plastic bag because it was really stinky. Do you have watercolor ground? Yeah, but... Um, I don't want to wait for it to dry, Elaine. Hi, Patty. I'm watercoloring today. I'm going to do this, but I'm, I think I'm going to go ahead and get out some um, different watercolor paper because I don't think the salt is going to work well on this journal because it's not really good watercolor paper. So I'm going to get out a different sheet. Okay, now I'm ready to start. I've only been talking for 30 minutes. Um, looking at all the different color kind of watercolor paper I've got. I wonder if I should use that caddy paper that I think I will just for the heck of it. Um, Kui got this when she was in India and it's handmade um, cotton fiber paper. Why don't we use that? So I must be priming myself to do something really cool, right? You're from Texas. <sighs> Didn't you guys have some winter this year? All right. Let's see. I guess she doesn't really give you step-by-step -step instructions on this one, so we're going to wing it. Um, because in this one, she shows the um, what she's doing over here. And it's a wet and wet painting. See page 39. I don't know what page I'm on. Oh, way back. Um, using Indian yellow and Prussian blue, allow the paints to interact for a short while. Once they stop moving, the paper is dry just a little. Um, yeah, she's using ink in this, and I will go ahead and use some ink as well. Um, but I'm thinking I'm going to draw the flowers on here first. <laughs> Journals can take tippins, right? Of course they can, Dar. Every book needs a tippin. We need to get some stone paper and make a journal cover with it. Look at her. Look at her. She's instigating. She's instigating. I'm going to go ahead quickly and draw these. Um, I don't even know. I guess they're called snowdrops. And I may do this one twice because I'll do it again after I get the um, granulation fluid. So can you guys see if I go ahead and draw? And the way I go about drawing stuff, you guys, you're just going to go, oh, my gosh. How does she get anything done? And I don't care if mine um, doesn't look exactly like theirs. doesn't bother me a bit. If it's close and you get the idea, I'm good with that. Okay, you guys can see. And I, my flowers are probably going to be a bigger part of this than they are in the book, but that's okay. Okay, that's basically the drawing that you have to do for this. And the reason I'm, I did it is so I know where to keep the paint from the background. 
because I'm going to get this whole thing sopping wet here in just a minute. And then just an idea where I want the, um, the stems to be. Now, one thing I saw, you know what I should have done? I should have used um, some water-soluble graph, um, yeah, graph, graphite, I guess. Um, in one of the books I was reading, you do your sketch with um, water-soluble, and then you just went ahead and painted it. And then the black moved, of course. And it was a white flower, so it ended up being gray. Um, and it looked very, very cool. I forgot a leaf back here, so we'll add this one in. And I want this a little pointier. Okay. And I need an eraser is... Hang on, I gotta go get it. I'll lighten these lines a little bit. I thought I did such a good job dragging all my junk back in here. Apparently not. Taking out the lines I absolutely don't want to show in the flowers. The rest of it I'll just lighten up. Okay. Anybody who's come in, you could use some magicals to give the effect of the granulation. Oh, Kathy, look at you being brilliant right there in chat. Just trying to please everyone. Eileen must have called you or something. That's actually a darn good idea. <sighs> okay. Changing plans. Not really changing plans because um, I think that's a fabulous idea, actually. We're going to give it a go. I'm going to go ahead and get some watercolor down in the background. I'll add some maybe green and blue magicals in it to give the effect of the granulation. I think it's a brilliant idea. Mixed media. There you go, Kathy. I am going to add, I think, I like the ink. I like the look of the ink. And I could also use the... Um, because I haven't put them away yet, because I haven't played much with them, the walnut ink crystals, which would make Eileen happy. Why are we all trying to make Eileen happy? For Pete's sake, make me happy. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> all right, I'll put this on the book so it stays open where I want it. That's actually a darn good idea. Amy made me happy this morning with my coffee, so I'll do something to make Eileen happy, even though I don't feel like I should have to. Ah, oh, that's so good. Okay. I'll get the magicals that I'm going to get down. I'm going to use the dark blue and probably the, let's use a lighter green. Let's use the luscious lime and we'll put them into the watercolor, the question of questions. 
do something artistic rather than watercolors. She is the biggest pain in my ass. I'm just saying. All right, and then I am going to use the walnut crystals. You can say that again, Julie. All right, need a big old fat water brush. I'm not going to get the flowers themselves. I'm not going to mask them off, but I'm going to try and keep the water kind of away from the flowers so that they stay white, which is going to be a trick with the magicals, but let's give it a go because we can. And I'm not real familiar with this caddy paper, so I don't know how long I'm going to have to work. I mean, I don't care if it gets in a little bit. And I'm not even going to tape it down. Because this paper, I believe, should be able to handle a lot of water without totally buckling. That's the goal here. And I didn't get my paint ready yet either, but that's okay. One thing I've learned, and I'm a slow learner, is um, like use the water. Don't be stingy with your water. When you're doing something like this, like totally use your water. And I'm a little unnerved with Ian here because I don't know if you guys saw some of Ian's watercolors that he posted over the weekend. I think I saw the um, one of them on Facebook, and I, I don't think I see all of his posts all the time. But, man, he posted some really, really nice watercolors this weekend. All right. Yeah, I think we've got all the areas. Okay, I can kind of tell that my paper is good because it's really shiny, really, really shiny. Okay, I think I'm going to use the Mission Gold watercolors. It's a limited palette, but I do really like the colors in it. So... Um, sometimes, for me, it's good to work with a limited palette. If I have too many choices, it's like I can't figure out what the heck I'm doing. So, all right. I'm using the Cobalt Blue, number one. And I'm using the lighter blue because... Um, I'm going to add the magical darker blues. I'm going to add some green in here, so um, that's why I'm leaving some spaces. But you can see how the, the paper is still plenty, plenty wet. And if it starts drying out, I'll just spray it with a mini mist or something. And if you're giving me suggestions right now, hang on and I'll get right back with you. All right, now I'm going to use the darker of the green because I'm going to use the lighter green of the magicals. So and I'm not necessarily using the same colors that um, she used.
And if I have to go in, I'll touch up later. I have to decide too. No, I'll wait until I'm closer to the end to make that decision because I like the the ink outlines. Oops. If you're not familiar with watercolors, where you didn't um, get the paper wet, the um, paint stops right there. Okay, while it's still wet, I can't dink around too long. Says the girl who's dinking around too long. Okay. Probably didn't fill this either. Hang on, I need water. This is not the ideal plan. You have to stop what you're doing midstream. Have no fear. That's cool up in there. Can you guys see it? Maybe I need to pull you down. Sorry. going to add the blue here in just a minute those dark places i'm going to leave i like them up around the flower itself so i'm not gonna, i don't want to mess with those i'm just really picking up water on the edges god that green did so good you guys you know i pulled in too close sorry i'm kind of tempted right now to add some salt. If I didn't want that to move right now, I would probably pick it up and tip it a little bit and move the colors around. But I'm loving that so much up in there and right in here that I really don't want to do that. So there's two things I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add salt right now. Um, it might be a little wet, but in some areas, I think it's getting dry enough that the salt um, would be really effective. Um, this is ice cream making salt. You can literally use any kind of salt you want, you guys. You can use table salt. You can use kosher salt. Um, the size of the salt determines the um, amount of texture on your piece. So um, 
Salt does take a while to work though. That's the problem. But that's okay. I think up in there, another thing I really love to use is this gauze. And you've got to put it down while it's still pretty wet. So I'll put some gauze on there too. And then I might use some of the... Um, Ink crystals. I love the texture of the gauze. Love it. Tape it down. Oh, we could try some rice. Um, Kathy was talking about that the other day. Um, all the different things you can use to absorb the moisture. And she had mentioned rice. And the thing I loved about that whole idea was like you slap your minute rice on there and you've got dinner and artwork all in one. <laughs> awesome. Who doesn't love that? Try some noodles. Oh my God, Kathy. You've been hanging around Eileen too long. That's all I got to say about you. And then I'm going to, even though um, they say if you use salt or whatever, um, don't use a heat gun. But I'm going to let this sit for a few minutes. Maybe even set it aside. Um, and do something else and let the magic happen. use some rice and noodles yeah the gauze will make it really really cool i wish i could think of um you read that rice is better than salt well see it's getting dry enough now um of course i can go over it a little bit i can pick up some of this on the edge and go over the gauze Like in there, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of water. Pick up some of the excess so the salt can work really, really good. I want more blue up in there. Do a quick B split, please. I want to see all the doodles. Okay. All right. While I set this aside, let me get some rice real quick. If I have a box open, it seems to me like I threw my box away and I may not have it even open, but let me see. Oh, I do. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Probably use rice more in um, art than I'm doing cooking because I don't. We don't eat much rice. It's gotten pretty dry though. Yeah, I'm not sure that I could add the rice now. Maybe when I add the brown. And I did a fair, fairly good job. Excuse me, of um, keeping the watercolor out of my flowers. I can always go back in and add, you know? I'm not tried this, but I wonder if you can use sand sprinkled on wet paint. I was just reading about that this morning, Ian, in one of these books here. Which one was it? I just read about that using salt and sand. It doesn't absorb the paint. Um, oh, I wish I could remember that. Ian, I will look that for that again. It was in which book? It was in one of the Claudia Nice books. Hi, Brooke. 
um, was talking about using sand. And she also used broken up seashells. So, yeah, there is some technique that she's tried that is effective. All right, I'm going to hit this with a heat gun. Or should I just let it happen? All right, I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to let this dry as naturally as I can. And I'll show the beast real quick. The beast, for those of you who don't know, is really my... Um, everything in one place kind of book. I do my to-do list. I draw in it. I write down things that I'm grateful for. Yeah, it's just kind of a calendar all in one place book is what the beast is. And Galena loves the beast and I love the beast. Anything I don't want to forget goes in the beast. I um. This is two years in one book. So here's starting 2020. Let me pull out so you guys can kind of see. Here's where I started 2020. So all of this back here, that's the watercolor I did on stream. Um, I glue things in here. I draw things in here. Um, that's a stamp that's a drawing that's a sticker no yeah that's a sticker or a rub on actually i watercolor in here anything can happen in the beast but it's notes that i don't want to forget i do birthdays just whatever i feel like goes in the beast those are drawings and watercolor this is not the best paper for watercolor but um yeah so anyway yeah so that was all last year there are places when i'm busy or whatever where nothing happens in there here's a little cheat sheet for myself so i that's why i put on the back so here's a note to myself i was useless today do you use clear gesso before watercoloring? Nope. And if it bleeds through a little bit, here's a note to myself. Bye bye, crappy city peeps. Or bye bye, city peeps. Labor Day. That means they're going home for good. But no, I don't put anything on these pages. I just watercolor in them. That's um that 10 ways to draw animals books. So yeah. It's just a fun place where stuff goes. There's no real theme. Just that was from Zandra. I don't know. What was I doing in June? Um, probably working out in the yard. That's probably. And then October is always a really empty month. Look at October. And the reason is, is because I was doing, um, there's Roxy Sir Coxy, um, Inktober. And so when I'm drawn Inktober, nothing gets done in October. And then it, at the beginning, I set it up kind of like a calendar um, bullet journal. Um, this is like year at a glance, everybody's birthday, holidays, whatever. And then I always do one month and then start. And each page holds two days. Do you have a flip through of the beast in more detail? Because you're in love with it. No, nope, this is pretty much what I do. I, I've been doing dangles lately. So and these are all the packaging off of the um, Prima. What is it? Um, oh, it's called Currents. There's an ink tent for a fountain pen I got. Here's where the Dow hit 29,000. <laughs> I always get excited about that, and then I can hardly wait to get my retirement statement. So, and here's the drawing. These are all out of that book that I just showed, the Sketch Encyclopedia look. It has little hearts because I love it so much. 
these are just some swatches that I decided to do, which probably led me to doing that other page in the scavenger hunt. There's my Hobby Lobby haul. And so now we're into um, February, little mouse. And then the last few days I haven't done much because I've been working on another project. So, yeah. So just write down whatever little things that go on during the day that make me happy, that need to get done, that, yeah, whatever. The packaging on Finn's new stencils. I'm keeping it for Reese. It's gorgeous. I don't have any. You had a dream and I popped in it. Was I, did I have all my clothes on, Mary? <laughs> I wasn't running around the, hot, the neighborhood naked, was I? There was a search party for a young man. Well, of course there was. <laughs> Good Lord, if I'm involved, it's got to be a search party for a young man in a thong with my clothes on, of course. We looked everywhere for the guy, nowhere to be found. You're painting along? Cool. Um, you, we were giving up when he showed up. He was at Janet's house doing art. Oh, my God. That's so funny, Mary. You need the scavenger hunt list, Dar? Okay. Um, you can get it if you go to the New Year's Eve streamathon video, and it's on my um, YouTube videos. In the description is a link. If you want, um, I can send it to you too, Dar, whichever works out best for you. The guy turned, oh, you know what? Robert came home today. He had to go get some milk or something, and he walked in, and he'd run into Steve. And I didn't know it, but UPS guys, I guess, have to bid on their um, routes. He bid on this route again, and he got it for an additional five years. And after that, I think he said he's moving because the route to his own neighborhood became available. So he's going to go do it. But I've got him for another five years, you guys. And by then, I'm going to be so gross and old. He won't want to hug anyway. So, oh, Piccola, you're so sweet. Thank you. Yeah, he's going to be here another five years, Amy. All right, I'm going to go ahead and um, dry this real quick because there's still some real wet spots, but hopefully you guys will be able to see the results of what we've done. Keep your fingers crossed. I'll only blow for a minute. Oh, and I had somebody say the other day that when I was sanding um, – the embossed paper the other day that it really came across loud for you guys. So I'm sorry. Kind of. <laughs> You'll get the idea anyway. I forgot a place up in there, darn it. Oh, well. See, the reason you don't want to use a heat gun when you're using salt is because the salt is actually absorbing the pigment in the water, so you want to give it all the time it needs. But for the sake of YouTube or streaming, I'm not doing that. No, this is the same one I've had forever. I have two of these. I have one exactly like Dee Dee's, and then I have this one. But no, I, don't, I didn't get any heat gun. Thank you, Mary. You probably appear in my dreams too, but sadly, I don't ever hardly ever remember my dreams. I wish I did because I bet they're steamy as hell. I'm kidding. <laughs> Oh, 
but I really did wish I remembered my dream. Where did I find the beast? The beast you can get at Barnes and Noble over in the journal section. Um, they're, I think, $9.95. They also had them online not very long ago for sale. I got three for six dollars each. So I've got two for six years of journaling ahead. No. Yeah, two for six. Yeah, six years. All right, this is dry enough. I think we're just going to go ahead and yank it off. The gauze didn't do too much there. The gauze is going to look really good there. I know, I can tell. I mean, it did a little bit, just not much. My bad for being so impatient. Yeah, you can see in there where the salt was, those blotches of color. That's good. That's what we want. And hopefully Eileen is happy that it's not just watercolor because that's boring. I'm going to have to step up my game because um, Eileen goes and hangs out with hunky guys on the weekends. And then she comes back to me on Monday and talks about how boring I am. So... I'm going to have to start inviting hunky men over. Oh, now that one came out really cool. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm going to have to step up my game to keep Eileen happy. Yeah, that one, could, it, it, it did do what it's supposed to do, but it would have worked better if I let it dry some more. So I might do this whole painting again and give it the time it needs to dry. But we're going ahead with this one. Because, Eileen, one thing I know for certain, I cannot compete with hunky guys. You'd think we're a couple of teenagers, right? And we're both getting Social Security. <laughs> That's how pitiful we are. <laughs> All right. I keep saving the salt. I just throw it right back in my salt container. So in the future, it might transfer colors, but I'm not going to worry about that. Okay. Clean up my little mess here. No one can compete with him. You think I didn't know that over the weekend? You think I wasn't in mourning? My BFF isn't going to love me anymore. She found a new boyfriend. All right, can you see up here how the salt works? And the longer you let it dry, the more you're going to get that texture. So the salt did pretty good, but it would have been better if I had left it. And then the gauze just creates texture that's just right down on the page. So I like that background. It's looking cool. Um... I think because there was so much water on the page, but I'm going to get this wet again down here, so no worries there. Um, like the magicals, and I've noticed this on all watercolor paper, the magicals really um, get absorbed into the paper, so they're not that mind-boggling like they are when you first sprinkle them on. But I'm going to get this wet again down here, and we're going to do it again. And then this time, just trying to think. Do I want to do it with a brush? I think I'm going to do it with a spray bottle. So I can control a little bit better where all the water goes. Know what I mean, Jelly Bean? I definitely want some more down here. And I need to get my, oh, my little spoon. When I first started to watch your show, I thought you and Eileen were a couple. <laughs> we are. We're a couple of nutcases. Painty girl. Hi, by the way. <laughs> We're a couple. A couple of crazy old bats. She's the crazy one, though. I'm the nice one. No, believe it or not, Eileen and I have never met in real life. We've only hung out together at streams. 
and I'm not sure how we figured out that we have this love-hate relationship, but however we figured it out, it's way awesome. And she really is the mean one. Okay. Now I'm going to have to be a little bit more careful. Let me see my picture again. All right, let's see. Yeah, see up in here, I forgot this little part right up in here. So right now, while I know I have that issue, I need to go ahead and fix it as best I can. Need to pay attention. I like the blue because I know um, after this whole thing is dry and I go in to work on the flowers, they're going to be primarily white, grayish. Um, they'll really stand out against that blue. So try and get some texture in there. Okay, yeah, down here it's looking a little better. I'm going to go ahead and add in a little bit more blue. And it's still wet enough down here that it's going to go ahead and bleed a lot. So that bees cool. I lost a little bit of the um, stem there, but that's okay. All right. And keep in mind, I have no clue what I'm doing. Do you need gray ink? No, I bought some of my own, Amy. Thank you, though. <laughs> yeah, I did buy the Noodler's Gray. All right. Here we go. I'm going to wet the whole thing again, even the flowers if they get some brown in it. Oh, well, stuff happens. Because I'm going to add the brown now. And the reason I'm adding the brown after everything else had been dried, except down here, um, hopefully the colors will stay kind of where they're at. Eileen made me buy these um, walnut ink crystals. Um, so we're going to get a few in here because we can. And I might not do the ink at all. I might just let the brown do whatever the brown is going to do. I'm loving this side over here a lot. And I think a little bit of this um, walnut goes a long, long way. So they work much like magicals when you get them wet. They go cuckoo. Thanks, Jilly. Hi, by the way. I love it too. The colors in this. Yeah, I'm liking the colors a lot my own self. I'm going to spray it again. And then you want me to add some rice then, Eileen? These mini misters don't hold any enough water for me. Okay, now I'm really liking the brown in there. It's looking very cool. Is Dee Dee still here? She might have gone for a walk in anticipation and eating all that. Oh, I like that. I got to leave that. Um, 
in anticipation of eating some of that candy that Norma sent her. Um, but Dee Dee, if you're still here, next time you send me happy mail, I expect one of those crowns on my package. Just saying. Yeah, look at that brown. Look what that brown has done. Ah, oh, I'll pull you guys down so you can see it up here. Look at that up in there. Can you see that? Um, don't pour it out. But if you want it, go ahead and drink it. I'm fine. Okay. I can make some more or whatever. But if you want it, have it. I got it. didn't um, hear that. So anyway, there are some really interesting places on this. I have to say, I'm going to take some of that color off the table and add it in up here so that doesn't stick out like a sore thumb like it is right now. I want some of that brown. Oh, that brown is so pretty. Eileen, of all the things you made me buy and enabled me, that may be my favorite yet. Okay, now we're going to do some rice because Eileen told me to and I'm scared to death of her. So some rice is going down here. I haven't lost all of the salt marks, so don't worry there. I think if I was going to do this again, I might tape this paper down, but... And I don't know if rice works faster than salt. I would say if whichever one you're going to use, let it dry naturally. I think you'll like the end results better. Call me crazy. I just think that. Thanks, Brooke. Thanks, Nanamo. Joan. Yeah, Robert doesn't know he's having rice and walnuts for dinner. <laughs> Eileen told me to do it, Mommy Kate. Hi, Mommy Kate. I don't know if you've ever been here before, but thank you so much for coming. This is not your typical um, YouTube location. Anything can happen here, and it's okay. Sometimes you might dumb into learning stuff, and sometimes you might not. It's okay either way. Mostly, we're just having fun. I love this down in here. I don't know if you guys can see it. I'm kind of, I'm not sure where to go because this is a, a long, narrow sheet of paper. So for you to see the whole thing, I have to be way far out. Um, you don't catch live often. Well, I'm glad you're here today. I think I will buy some spiral noodles and try this instead of the rice. I'm not sure that the noodles would absorb moisture that quick, though, Eileen. I mean, I don't know. I don't know why I believe that, but I just believe that. This is interesting. I like it very much. And mine is probably not going to look exactly like the drawing in the book, but that's okay with me because... Um, I don't necessarily care or want my art to look exactly like um, the one in the book. You know, I think that's a stepping off point for art. But, yeah, I don't necessarily want mine to look exactly like theirs. So I'd be cool with that. Just letting this dry and running off at the mouth. But you have colored noodles. Well, that's true. You could invite your neighbors over and feed them colored noodles. Ramen noodles. Ramen noodles could be fun. I actually have some ramen noodles. Do we want to try that? 
while this is drying, okay, I got an idea. Let me go see if I still have those ramen noodles out there. And I don't mind using them because I don't eat ramen. I'm not sure why I even have them. Okay, so much for that idea. I threw them away because I knew I wasn't going to eat them. That's pretty typical. <laughs> That's got to go taking up space. Can't do ramen, don't have any. I threw it away. And those ramen noodles had been out there a long time. Hey, Brenda. Glad you made it here. You're homesick today. Oh, I hope you feel better soon. Sorry to get you excited about the ramen that I don't have. Tear duct infection. Oh, my gosh. Oh, that sounds horrible. Read and chat. All right. I know this looks like a mess right now. And I'm not sure what to do about the rice. I'm not sure if this was wet enough for the rice to really do anything. And the crazy thing is, I know, if I put the heat gun on this right now, I'm going to have rice everywhere. I know that. So, you love ramen? Um, it's just too salty for me. I know when I was in college, a lot of the kids ate ramen because you could get like 10 packages for a dollar. Um, yeah, I'm thinking it wasn't wet enough either. You would just leave the rice on there for texture. Well, Brenda, this is an experiment. I've never done the rice either. This was um, Eileen's idea, and I don't think it was wet enough to get any real results. So here's what we're going to do. And we'll get this argument solved once and for all. I've got some B paper here and I need to, I'm getting pretty low on B paper. B paper is really inexpensive water paper. B is the name brand B E E. So if you went on Amazon and looked up just B E E watercolor paper, it'll come up. It's certainly not horrible paper. I'm going to set this aside. E, its sides are icky. Let me get something to put that on because you know that's going somewhere. All right, that can sit right there for a minute. All right, here's an experiment. My brush wasn't clean, and that's okay. Because we're just going to use whatever's on the table. That's really, really, really a lot of water. These big brushes are really hard to get clean in this little jar of water here.
We'll try and make something halfway fun since we're going to use the paper anyway. Hi, Holly. I'll go ahead and add some little bit darker blue. Looks about the same color, but it's not. It's a little bit darker. I wish that granulation medium, I'd ordered it Friday or something so I could look forward to it coming today. All right. Now this is plenty wet. I know this is plenty, plenty wet. So if the rice is going to work, it should work on here. The thing is, it may not show up where the white is, but that's okay. We're going to give it a go anyway. Oops, that didn't go there. I should get some more rice, I think. Roxy, I don't think you want to be up here. Well, you might want to be, but I don't think I want you up here. So you need to scram, girly. There you go. Now we've got some rice on there. And you guys saw how absolutely soaking that paper was. So if this is going to work, it should work. Right? All right. Roxy, cat said, meow. Don't you have a nap to take? Huh? I think she wants to come over and drink my paint water. She loves paint water. I don't know why, but that's the last thing your cat needs to be drinking. All right, I can see it absorbing a few places where I had a lot of pigment. So we're going to see. Now I need to switch these two out. I'm not sure how I'm going to do that. I'm just going to move this over onto an ad that came in the paper or in the mail today. Come on. Don't be difficult. There. Now that can just sit over here and dry somewhere where, because I just set it in that. Where am I going to put this? And some paper towels. There we go. All right, we're going to let that sit. We're going to clean up this mess. I'm not sure which is going to work better. I'd like to think that these people who write books that we all buy for exorbitant amounts of money have tried the rice thing. And if it was a better technique, they'd tell us. But I guess we'll wait and see, huh? Would the salt rice thing work with watercolor paints? You don't have ink. Oh, yeah, this is watercolor Nanamo. So absolutely, salt works great with um, watercolor, as does do an experiment. Um, I could do that same experiment. I don't know if we have enough time, but um, and put saran wrap on it. 
the texture that you get with saran wrap on watercolor, wet watercolor, it's got to be really wet, um, is amazing. Yeah, try saran wrap on it too. You won't be sorry. It's a very cool thing. All right. I can't see that that soaked up a bunch of anything. So we're going to, and it's, I don't think it's wet enough now. Okay. See, Eileen is really happy because right now is the messy part. Yeah. I can't see that the rice did a whole hell of a lot of anything, which may be my bad. I think the salt did way better. But it could have been that it wasn't wet enough to begin with. So it could have been my bad. So somebody else is, well, we'll wait until that other one. But on this one, I don't think it made a whole hell of a lot of difference, frankly. But we're moving on because we got stuff we need to do. <clears throat> yeah, I can't tell that it did a darn thing, Eileen. Even places where I knew it was still really wet. Yeah, I can't see that it did a whole hell of a lot of anything. But Eileen, it's a mess, so you should be happy. I'm throwing this away. Robert's going to have to figure out something else for dinner. What kind of minute rice or long cooking rice? That was minute rice. I'm not doing long cooking rice unless I get a rice cooker. It was instant, Holly. Yeah, bubble wrap would be good for texture. Um, I'm not sure how that would work. I imagine on um, watercolor, if you just put it on there and let it dry, you must have cheap rice. I could very well have cheap rice. I hardly ever eat rice. If I'm going to eat rice, I'm going to eat it at a restaurant. Robert is not a rice lover is probably why I don't. I do like like rice with cheddar cheese and broccoli in it. But yeah, it probably very well is cheap rice, Eileen. In my mind, minute rice would work better for absorption. Yeah, see, and that was minute rice, so... Um, that's what I would think, too, that it would work better for absorption, but who knows? We're going to find out here in a minute when I um, when that other one dries. Okay. So here we are. Let's see what we want to do next. Um, I'm not sure if I want to do the ink or not now. I'm thinking I'm liking that brown. I'm actually liking the background the way it is. So there's that. Hubs is po po hubs gonna miss having blue rice. I know, Gar, but I hadn't told him that that was on the um, menu, so he won't even miss it. Rice pudding? I don't eat rice pudding. Well, I probably would eat rice pudding. I just don't. It's not something in my menu. So, hey, Jamie. Rice has starch in it, which is hydrophobic, water resistant. So I don't think rice would do as well as the salt. See, Ian, I think that's been my experience up till right now. I think the rice is not, um, not doing as well. But when you make it, it does um, absorb the water to soften its bad self. So I don't know. We're going to find out. I'm cleaning up some of this mess around here. I have rice everywhere, Eileen. I hope you're happy, you goof. All right, we're going to go ahead here. I'm just looking at this background to see if there's anything I want to do. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and paint the stems in first. Or maybe okay I'm gonna go ahead and start painting in a little bit of the flowers um, 
This is just clean water. I want a clean napkin. Watercolor is so crazy because it's a whole series of get it wet, let it dry. Get it wet, let it dry. I think I need to, no, I'm going to use indigo right now for the shadow of this flower. So, and this is in the Mission Gold set. So, indigo blue is one of your options. And I'm going to add just a little bit, not much at all, along this edge because I want it to spread out, kind of like a shadow. Oops, got to make sure my brush is clean. I almost really goofed up there. But the nice thing about watercolor is really, you can't really goof up that bad. Seems like there's always a way out. Or you can just say, well, that's what I intended. Duh. And I might have to go back in at the end and um, clean up some areas, but that's okay. I don't mind. You leaving, Mary? Bye, Mary. I hope we have fun in your dreams again tonight. And the paper is dry enough now that I can go ahead and um, work right up to it and it's not going to move. So that's a good thing. Those are one of the things that you learn in watercolor and usually you learn it the hard way. And I am looking at my reference right now to decide where the shadows and colors are going. It's not going to be just exactly like theirs, but it's going to be close. I'm liking that a lot. All right, now I'm losing track of my drawing, so I have to be a little bit more careful. I'm going to smooth out, I think, right along. Yeah, this is dry. Have you guys ever watched The Ranch on Netflix? That's what I spent my weekend binging, you guys. Talk about juvenile delinquent. Oh, my God. I feel like such a juvenile delinquent when I watch it. Hey, Joycey. Got to be careful. I don't want to get my fingers in that.
isn't it? Elaine watches it. It's funny. It is funny. And it, the funny thing about the ranch is I'm from Colorado. Originally, I was born and raised there and moved to Oklahoma in um, 1996. Now, these colors spread into my white leaf, so I'm not crazy about that, but that's okay. Um, so a lot of the things, the jokes and crap that they talk about Colorado absolutely kill me. I mean, but they talk about things that are really, really familiar to me. So um, it's absolutely the most juvenile delinquent show ever. It makes me laugh so much. All right. Apparently, I'm not going to be cleaning that up much, so... Anyway, you have um, foul language cannot offend you if you watch the ranch. Triple X warning, but language doesn't bother me. So, ah, oh, Dar, I adore you too. I miss you so much. I mean, I can't even tell you how much I miss you. Some of the journals that I worked in back when we were hanging are some of my favorites to this day. In fact, there's a tribute page to Little Mary in one of those um, journals. Do you remember that, Elaine? I did that tribute page to Mary with the flowers and stuff. Um, I have to pull those journals out. I think they're in the cedar chest in the kids' room. I haven't had them out and showed them in forever. But yeah, it was because of you that I did that. All right. That's funny that, that something got in there. I'm going to go ahead and make that a little bit more distinct. All right, hopefully you guys are going to be able to see this here in a minute. I think I'm going to do that with ink, actually. Some of this. I think I am going to ink it since I got um, color in the um, petals of the flower themselves. Um, to define the areas, I may go back in and ink. We'll just see how it turns out. A little darker than I want, so I'm going to pick some of that up. You're pretty sure this is the last season of the ranch? I kind of suspect it is. Julie, Colorado always will have a piece of my heart, too. I mean, Jamie was sending me pictures uh, over the weekend of him and the kids, him and his girlfriend and the kids up skiing. I swear, I haven't been homesick for Colorado like that in the longest time. I'm not kidding. I absolutely was so homesick when I saw them up skiing in the mountains. It was just like, oh, why did I ever leave? Of course, when I left, I never even imagined that Jamie's kids, you know, well, at the time I left Colorado, he didn't even have kids. He wasn't even married. But I would give anything to be able to go skiing with those girls. Of course, my knees, I can't ski anymore. But, yeah, I, that just makes me like, oh, I'd give anything to go back and ski. And, and I wrote him and I said, oh, that makes me so homesick. You and the girls up in the mountains skiing. I'd give anything at all to do that again. I did get to ski with the oldest grandkids, but the younger ones, you're going back next July. You know, all my family has moved away. You stayed at Beaver, Beaver Creek. I sk skied at Beaver Creek a lot. Um, I like Beaver Creek a lot more than Vail. 
Um, oh, that's funny, Holly, that your mom was born in Colorado and your dad in Oklahoma. Um, I lived in Colorado and moved to Oklahoma, <laughs> but I had family in Colorado. And this is what I was going to say. Most of my family has since left Colorado. So it's not like I have people there. Um, I have one brother there left there. And of course, Cooey is still there and I could go see Cooey anytime, but Cooey comes here to see me. So, um, yeah, it's just like, I just don't have a lot of reasons to go back there. And I don't feel like I left anything there is another thing. I'm going to add some um, darker blue down in here like it shows on that flower because that's really pretty. Um, I didn't really leave anything there. Um, the kids come here. I don't know. But it used to be my entire family was there. But over the years, everybody's just kind of left. So if my sister was there, I'd be there a lot. Is this looking like anything at all, you guys? <laughs> Starting to wonder. That blue magical just moved more than I wanted it to. Ooh, that's a little darker than I wanted to. Wood quick, Joycey, Eileen, do you drink? Of course she drinks from morning till night. It's all the girl does. Haven't you seen me say, oh, my God, Eileen, drunk already? I shouldn't even say that because I think so. Eileen's like me. I think she doesn't drink at all. And I can't say I don't drink at all, I, but I drink almost nothing. <laughs> Water and coffee, I'm like, Eileen. Sometimes she acts drunk in the morning, though. I want to go next July for the 25th. Your dad's death. He's still the only Anglo buried in the rest of you. Oh, cool, Julie. I think I knew that from you. If Julie's coming to Oklahoma, that girl is coming here. She's coming and sponging off me for like as long as she wants. Okay, looking in the camera, it's starting to get a little depth. So I'm I'm happy with this. I'm A-OK -okay with it. And let me see, where else do I need a shadow? This I've got to define a little bit more, so I'm going to put a shadow. In here. That blue actually should have gone up a little further. I'm going to paint that in. I'm going to make it look like it's supposed to. Hopefully this isn't a big mistake, you guys. Hopefully I won't get a, a bloom there, but I might. Hopefully not, though. I'm going to spread it out real far. It's getting there. I'm still looking for a face. Well, find one. <laughs> you might have to. I'd love for you to, Julie. I think you and I would have an absolute freaking blast if you came here. A blast. I'm going to, now I've never done this before, but I want some of that dark blue from the Magicals. So I'm going to actually try and turn the mag some of this little Magical powder into watercolor so I can put it where I want it. And I've never done that before, but 
we're going to see how that works. Oh my gosh, that is hot. That, that was like 10 granules of magicals, you guys. So you can turn your magicals into watercolor. Look how, oh my gosh, how concentrated that is. <gasps> Whoa, baby. Baby, baby. Okay, tell hubs. Julie, road trip. Now I want to turn all the magicals into watercolor. I'm going to add some up in here since I've got some left over. And it's still real wet up here. So and there's still rice stuck up there. What the heck is that? The big blob of oh, I know what it is. It's the um, crystals. Yep, that's exactly what it is. So if I'm gonna get this re wet up here, I gotta be real careful because if the the walnut ink crystals are not at all or exactly like the magicals, you don't get them. Um, fully dissolved, they're going to reactivate. Just saying. If it's like brush oil, you can paint it like a watercolor painting. Yeah, that's apparently what Magicals put watercolors to shame. Oh, my God. Here she goes again. Who put a nickel in her? Don't wind her up after the beginning of the stream, you guys. I am, Vaughn. I'm going to find rice everywhere for the next week. Okay. Now, I'm going to start adding some green to this. I lost my circle up there. So I'm going to turn some of the green magicals and now I'm just making repairs from where I was just sloppy. Because all these come up I'm going to fill in right here. Yeah, that brown will move and move and move. So you got to be really careful there. Here we go with the green. We'll let all that blue dry. In fact, I'm going to hit it with the heat gun real quick. The heat gun fell just a minute ago, so. Okay. Here we go. Dara, I think you're a good lesson for everybody who goes see tough times in life. Always look forward. Everything gets better. You thought I had maggots? Oh, my God. I want some blue up in here, actually. But I'll wait until I'm all done, and then if I want, I'll go back and add it in. But yeah, I'm kind of wanting more blue up in there. Still looks cool. I like it. And the cool thing is, even though I've gone back in and touched up here and there, I'm not getting blooms where I've re-added the water. So that's kind of cool. All right, it's dry enough that I can um, start working on it again. That's the one thing about being an impatient person. Waiting 
for the drawing time in watercolor sometimes is agonizing for me. And I try and be good about um, letting it dry naturally, you know, rather than hurrying the whole process up. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to use Hooker's Green in the Mission Gold for the parts of the stem and up here in the flower that need green. I'm going to use the darker of the greens. Viridian, I think, is too. No, well, I could maybe mix one and see if I like that. But I really do like the Hooker's Green and the Mission Gold. So. And I'm going to, just for the hell of it, so that the colors, I might add a little bit of this luscious lime later. We'll see. Okay. Okay, I'm ready to move on, move on. Okay, do you guys want to see the rice experiment before I start getting stuff wet? Let's look at it because I think it's dry. All right, here we go. Rice results. Oh, there's a little bit, but I think salt works a lot better, Eileen. Just saying. Not bad, not bad. You definitely get a different shape than you get with the salt. Salt, you tend to get more circular. Of course, it's the type of salt you use, too, so keep that in mind. But it does work. I'll hold this up so you can see it. Wait, we need a special... Applicator bottle for mag. No, you don't need a special applicator bottle. Buy them in the little tubs and buy these little spoons or something. I just get carried away. Um, yeah, it's not horrible. It's definitely different. All right, on top of this, do you want to do a salt experiment? There goes the blue rice that we're not having for dinner, going in the trash. There you go. It's not horrible. Yeah, it's not horrible at all. Let's try. All right. The paper is dry enough. I think I can go ahead. We're going to do a salt experiment now. It might, no, nope, it's not moving, so we're good. All right, here we go. What the hell? We got nothing to lose. We're going to do the same thing only with salt. And you'll be able to see the difference, I'm sure, right on the same sheet of paper. And I'm going to use blues again. I'm going to keep it blue. Blue, blue, blue. See how much water is? I mean, it, the water is running on there. So. I love experiments and stuff, so this is fun for me. Okay. While it's still really sopping wet, and we know it's wet enough,
and it should have time to dry wouldn't by the time I'm done wouldn't an hour be enough you think all right that's a lot of salt on there try some cotton string on it okay I've got some I can get real easy it's just right in the other room let me take my scissors in there where are they Roxy, there they are. Are you gonna blame Roxy? I think Ian and I, Eileen, have been talking because now I'm getting out other stuff which means there's more to clean up later. So the mess is greater, which will make Eileen happy. So I think Ian may now be in cahoots with Eileen. Just saying. Okay, here's some cotton string. I'll just lay it down and use my handy dandy little scissor or spoon to press it down into the water, make sure it's touching. I bet the string is going to look too cool too, Ian. This is as many um, rabbit trails as Dee Dee does, right? But we're just experimenting and having fun. And we'll have something fun when we're done, so what the heck. You can see where the string is already absorbing some of the blue, which means you will get something. That's a big old glob of water down there. We're going to sop some of that up, actually. Oops. All right. There. Since it's just a big old fat experiment, we're going to leave that to dry again. Hi, Orla. Okay. That's going to sit back here for a minute. And we're going to move on. All right, we got our green. Make sure the brush is clean. I don't have any clean water left, so we're going to do the best we can with dirty water. What mess are we making today? Hi, Mark. Dental floss may work too. Um, my dental floss wouldn't in because it's waxed, and that would not absorb um, any water. I wish that was wider around in there. Ooh. I might have to add, go back and add some gouache. But when I look at it in the camera, it's like, no, it looks okay. So who knows? All right, let's look at my reference because I'm losing track of what's where. This does actually look like a mess, but I'm liking it a lot. Okay, so up here at the top of there is a circle. I kind of lost it here, but I'm going to go ahead and paint it in, and then I'm probably am going to um, shoot. It actually is up higher, so I'm going to move that. I maybe shouldn't have put that green in there, but oh well. Because that goes up like that. Screwing up big time, boys and girls. Okay. 
glad I chose the dark green. I have no room to put anything. I'm like out of room. By painting this in now, I'm hoping to go ahead and give some definition to things because right now it looks real, real abstract, which is fine too, but I want it to kind of look like what I want it to be. Okay, just tried the salt thing. Do I wait for paint to dry before? Yes, yes, Nanamo. Let the paint dry completely. The longer you can leave it, and you'll know when it's dry, but the longer you can leave it, the better your results are going to be. I hurried it today just for the sake of the stream. But yeah, if you're going to do the salt technique or the saran wrap technique, um, best thing is to just walk away from it and just don't jack with it for as long as you can make yourself stay the hell away from it. Actually, I'm going to paint with clean water up here. And let that green just migrate down as best it will. And I should have done that over here as well, so I'll do it now. Need some more hookers green. I'm out.
Now I'm getting quiet because I'm thinking, thinking, thinking. Oops, bye. Hate gun. Thank you, Holly. Thanks so much. Thank you, Colleen. Don't jack with it. Don't jack with it. That's what I said. All right. I'm about ready to hit it with the heat gun. You're on number 23 of your beach paintings. Hi, Sticky Art Channel. I'm like in the background. If I'm if like up here where I, I really kind of want this different up here, I'll wait till this is completely dry and try and go back in and do some more. I think down in here I'm going to add some more brown, but I'm going to let like the whole thing settle in on me before I go back and start making some changes. But I would like some more blue up here and I am going to use, I'm going to go ahead and define um, with some ink, I think. I think I'd be really happy. And see up here where they should be overlapping. I need some shadow right in there. And I need some clean water. <laughs> you know what? I'm not going to be a pain in the butt. I'm going to go get myself clean water. When you know you need clean water, get yourself clean water because it's stupid not to. When you stick your dirty brush in the clean water, fix it. Right? Right. Another thing that might be fun is, I don't remember which one it was. I think it was in the, um, what's her name? Holman, I think is her name. Yeah, if, you, um, if you're familiar with Carlin Holman, she does the backgrounds that have kind of blocks of paper in it, um, or blocks of different color. This one would be a good one to do that with, too. Even Oh, man, Magicals just fell on the floor. The dark one. I'm screwed. I got a vacuum. Like right now, well, as soon as I'm done, yeah, magicals on your floor are not pretty. Permanent when dry. No lid on it. <laughs> Dumbass. All right. Oh, awesome sticky just said. No, it's all right, Gail. It's It was in this container. I just hadn't put the little sticky lid on it. So, yeah, I'll get it vacuumed up. I don't even know if any spilled, but, yeah. All right, looking, looking, looking. I really wish. I'm going to go over that with some gouache, I think. I really am. I think I'd be happier if it was wider. Live and learn, though. It's okay. Just looking to see if there's any more shadows or anything I want to add. I think I do want to add one. Yeah, I'm going to add a little one up here. Oop, green, don't want green. Now it probably gets boring for you guys because I get pretty meticulous at this point about going back and seeing what I want different or whatever. Yeah. So I imagine that probably could be not fun to watch. Eileen thinks none of it's fun to watch, so... I'm going to go ahead and put, I'm going to um, use some white gouache and clean up the edge of that. Then I'm going to dry it real good, add some ink because I don't have that much time left. And I'd like to finish something for you guys. And I'm going to go ahead and use this Hemi gouache that you can get on Amazon. Really inexpensive. Um, I don't think my lid is fitting really tight. So I'm going to 
have to water it down, but these paints are usually pretty, pretty gooey. So you don't have to do that. But down here on this corner, you can see where it's kind of cracked. Yeah, I think um, my lid's not fitting tightly. It's bent a little bit, but it's all right. It'll still work. All right, I want to do a little tiny experiment. Thank you, Kathy. And if, if it's going to look stupid, I'm not going to do it. So, but I do want this a little wider over here. And it was probably my fault to begin with um, that I didn't keep that line distinct enough. But gouache is a little bit more opaque than watercolor, um, but it is water soluble. So it works really well with watercolor. Okay, I'm liking that better right now, I can tell you. And if it absorbs a little bit of the color from underneath, I'm okay with that. Yeah, I'm way okay with that. See, yeah, I wanted that so the flower itself. And I might, no, nah, I'm going to leave that where the blue has kind of spilled over into the white up there. I think I'm going to leave that. I'm okay with that. I don't necessarily want it perfect. I mean, I'm okay with a little bit of um, bleed through. I am going to define this line a little bit more. So the shadow looks like what I intended when I put it there. That's the edge of the flower, so I need some blue there. So let that in here. Yeah. Okay, not going to fuss with it. See, that's my problem is I'll start fussing with it, and next thing you know, I'll have a whole different painting. Um. That's good. I want that to go up there. This really got out of whack, so you know. Okay, that's all the touch up I'm doing on the white. I don't necessarily want it perfect. See, that's the problem. My problem is if it's not what I envision or if it's not perfect like I envision it, then I'll start dinking with it, and I need to learn to not do that. Thanks, Belinda. Yeah, I don't see. I'm just a nitpicky wiener. But I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to turn that over and see if the lid will fit better. Apparently not. Yeah. Okay. Putting the gouache away. Gouache is a nice complement to watercolors. I will say that. It does look good. The Magicals and the Walnut Crystals made it. Yeah, I think using different um, mediums in the same painting is a nice look. I'm not unhappy with it. So I'm going to hit it with the heat gun, get everything good and dry. Then I am going to use... some ink on the flowers themselves. That's the wrong one. Oh, another thing. Well, no, I'll use ink for that too. Okay. Hang on.
it's not very wet, just a few space, places. try I don't know if it's gonna work but this is a um, platinum carbon ink pen I'm gonna try to do some a um, little bit of definition with it I don't know if it's gonna work or not we'll see I haven't used it for a couple days so I might have to really juice it to get it moving Nope, look at that. Worked right away immediately. Thanks, Joan. Bye, Jamie. Go have a great afternoon. Look at my hands. Ugh. Okay. And I'm going to do it real sketchy. I'm not going to have perfect lines. The reason I like this pen and the ink that's in it, it is carbon ink that's in it, carbon platinum. Um, or platinum carbon, I don't know which it is. Platinum carbon, I guess, is what it is. Um, waterproof. I mean, it's like bulletproof ink. It really is. Use a damn ruler to make the lines. Go pound sand, Eileen. Get your butt down to the beach and pound sand right now. No, this is probably the best bulletproof ink anywhere. Um, don't use it, though, unless your paper is completely dry. That's one thing I will say. It won't like damp paper. I'm sketching with its um, um, platinum carbon ink pen. Um, it's obviously fountain pen. Um, love it so much. And you can buy the, um, carbon, platinum carbon ink, um, waterproof, awesome. And it works well on this paper, which for a, um, fountain pen is kind of unusual. They're they're sometimes pretty picky, but the this pen it is so not the least bit picky. I'm gonna have to add blue in there, but that's okay. Okay, I just scratched off some of the, um, yeah, I knew the pen wasn't going to like that. I just scratched off. There was a pile of magicals there. The pen did not like that. So, But if you want a nice sketching pen, um, Fountain, this I would, I would highly recommend. Don't remember how much it costs, but whatever it was, it was worth it.
course, if you hang out with me, you'll soon learn that I'll say that just about any pen I own. Whatever I paid for it, it was worth it. <laughs> Ask Amy. <laughs> Amy can't say anything because she's just as bad as me. Okay, that's better. I like this sketchy line. Have you compared it to the Noodler's Black? Um, Gina, I would actually call them comparable. Is the ink in a cartridge or did you fill it? You can buy both, Elaine. You can buy the um, converter. Uh, right now I'm using the... Um, ca um, canister or whatever the hell, cartridge. Um, but you can get the carbon ink in either. Um, I think I have it right here. But yeah, I I would say the the carbon ink i bought a bottle of it and i have a converter for the pen so you can do it either way i do love the the carbon ink though i really do and i would say maybe i like it a little bit better than the noodlers but it could be i don't know why but yeah if you're a fountain pen freak and you want a fun sketch pen um this one i recommend the nib is just perfect for um drawing it's a good size but you can do the same thing with um a micron or anything else too so don't feel like you have to run out and get this you do not a micron pen will do the exact same thing you can get a zig you can anything permanent at this point and actually if you're not gonna um, do anything on top of this at this point it wouldn't even have to be waterproof I do try and use waterproof though when I'm drawing I really do And because I'm being a little bit less careful down here because they are such long lines of seemingly perfect lines against this background, I'm kind of screwing them up on purpose. So next time, I probably will be playing with the granulation medium because it's new and it's coming and I'm excited. Kathy Arbor used it last week, and I think um, I think Colleen used it too. Colleen's in chat. Um, she has her own channel. Both Kathy Arbor, Colleen, they're all in chat. Click on the three dots next to their name, and you can go visit their channels. Um, yeah, I would recommend either one. So I don't know. I feel like I, I'm not sure what else I can do to improve it at this point. I'm liking it a lot, I have to say. So if you guys got any suggestions, go ahead. I kind of want more blue up in here. Should I do some, add some little bit of water and add some blue magicals up in there? You always have a pen inked with Apache Sunset. I don't know that I'm familiar with Apache Sunset, Gina. Is there something out there I don't know about? Do I need to know? If I need to know, you better tell me, like right now. I'm going to go ahead and try while you guys are here because that's really bugging me. I want some more blue up here. But it's, oh, I don't know. See, I go back and forth. I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to add some. <laughs> God. it sucks to be me I'm going to be a little bit careful though okay
And remember that brown has the ability to move. So I want to be a little bit careful about that. And I'm not going to add a lot, okay? Okay, wish me luck. Okay. CB is just going, oh my God, oh my God, she's going to get carried away. I know she is. Maybe not, maybe not. Yeah, if you're new to fountain pens, be very careful with what inks you put in them. Um, don't ever put any kind of acrylic ink into a fountain pen. Use a dip pen. So, yeah, you, there's a little bit that you've got to learn. But it's a fun hobby, I have to say. Um, oh, that ran in there. I'm going to undo that real quick if I can, if I can, if I can. That may have been a real bad, dumb thing, dumbass thing I did. Okay. Got it out of there. Oops. <laughs> you got to know where your nozzle is pointing. All right. I'm feeling better about that. No, it's okay. I fixed it. Kimberly, I like when you get carried away. Yeah, no, I'm. that's all I'm doing. I just wanted that big green spot up there broken up a little bit. So now that I did, and the cool thing is if I wanted to now, I could pick some of it up. But I'm liking it just the way it is. I like the green, the blue, the brown. I'm okay with it. So, I owe you a smooch, CB. Oh, well, I tried. <laughs> I can go ahead and clean that off. And I can go ahead and add some more white if I want, CB. That's the thing. That's so funny. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. You guys are always so sweet and kind. But I'm okay with this. It was fun. It was a bunch of experiments. Um, not a horrible thing. I'm, I like it. I really do. I won't mind putting it in my book. Okay. Here's the experiment with salt. And this is still pretty darn wet. So, but can you see? Okay. I'm going to show you guys. Because this is one of the things that salt does that is so cool. See in here where the lighter background was? And the salt is either pushing the pigment out. It's pushing the pigment out and absorbing, oops, and absorbing the water. So you get these crazy um, spaces of color that I've never seen anything else do that. So. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to let this set and go ahead and dry, and then I'll probably post a picture on it. I might paint something on top of it, or who knows. Um, but yeah, that's the cool thing that salt will do, and I'm really not going to speed this up. I'm going to let the salt do exactly what the salt wants to do in its own good time, and I'll make a point of saving it for next week to show you. So, and then one thing I did forget, and I just saw it when I turned around here, and I moved it, damn it. Where did I put it? Because I wanted, okay. I did, last week I showed a card from Teresa. It's horrible, send it to me. Holly, that might work someday. Um... Gina, go down the um, 
I think it's in the seasoning aisle where they keep all the other salt. And down toward the bottom, this is where I found it. This is the ice cream making salt. And it comes in big hunks like this. So I put it in a um, couple layer bag of Ziploc. And I took my hammer and I smash parts of it. So I get different size of grains because some of them are pretty darn big. But I beat it with a hammer, so I got a bunch of different sizes of salt. And if I wanted to, I could probably hammer that further. Um, but yeah, it's ice cream making salt. And it's cheap as hell. Like when you look at it next to the sea salt, you're going to go, why the hell did I ever buy that expensive sea salt? Um, yes, I do reuse them. If I end up with a little touch of red somewhere who cares um but anyway i got a card from teresa peterman you guys know teresa um she's always so kind so generous and makes the most beautiful card she sent me another one this one actually came on the day that it was snowing in oklahoma we don't get much snow here so this one it was just like oh she knew it was going to be snowing in oklahoma so um yeah, so, and she sent me some extra postage that she, I think Imelda had sent her. Yeah, stack of shapes. She's been in chat today. Um, these were some duplicates or extras, so Teresa was kind enough to send them to me. Thank you, Teresa. You know I'm always so appreciative. But she sent another beautiful card, and I like to show you guys because they're so well done. Um, yeah. So thank you, Teresa. I wish I'd shown it at the beginning, but I didn't. All right, what else? Yeah, I'll get my granulation medium this week, and so we'll play with it next week. Eileen, was that boring? Because I did get the magicals out ultimately. She's still going to say it's boring because that's the kind of wench she is. All right, there it is. Rock salt. Okay, that's what it's called then, just rock salt. I think mine had just great big ice cream on it. I know, the card is so pretty. Teresa's cards are always so awesome. So... I don't think I could do any more to this. So I'm thinking I might be done. The only thing I might do is add some more blue down in here and brown in. No, I'm kidding. I'm not going to do some good parts. Oh my God, look at her. She will never, ever like confess to anything. Dar, I will actually write myself a note. Oh, and another thing. Um, I think it's all in one journal. Oh, my gosh. I can't spell. Um, I will get that out, Artie Dar. Um, Dee Dee had said something about doing a... Um, a stream about genealogy and I think I'm going to do a separate stream I probably won't do that on my Monday stream unless you guys want me to um, where are the green bits on this snowdrops my picture doesn't show any Dorothy and I don't know what a snowdrop is they showed green up here at the top but none down in the petals themselves um, Thank you, Vaughn. Um, so anybody who wants to um, do like a genealogy stream, I'll be happy to do that. I love genealogy as much as I love art. I spent years and years um, doing genealogy. And I have traced my Halverson family back to the 1500s in Norway. And because I've got... Um, 
Native Americans in my family. I've done some Native American genealogy, um, German, and English. So anybody who wants to do that, you know, leave me a note or something, and I'll happily do that. But I think I'm going to do it as a separate stream apart from the art stream. On the same channel, just, you know, like this is a genealogy stream rather than an art stream. So I'll be talking about that. So, yeah, just let me know if you're interested. And um, look at, you can definitely see the salt now. So that's so cool. And maybe I'll, I'll do one with saran wrap so you can see that too. Anyway, all right, my time is about up. I appreciate you guys so, so much. Go have some fun this afternoon. And um, yeah, next week we'll be using granulation medium. And I'm excited about that. What time would be good if I went live painting beaches? Um, Sticky Art Channel, I don't believe anybody comes on now after me. I haven't seen Shauna say that she's streaming. Thanks, Lena. Love you and miss you. Yeah, I don't think anybody's, I haven't seen Sean or anybody say they're coming on after me. So um, I'll go ahead and click on your name. Um, yeah, I'll go to your channel and look you up. So thank you guys. Love you all so much. We'll see you next time. Adios, Amigos.